When envisioning the Mars dream, minds naturally turn to Elon Musk, the visionary CEO of SpaceX, whose fervent ambition revolves around establishing a city on the Red Planet. This metropolis, designed to sustain itself and accommodate a million inhabitants, marks a pivotal leap toward making humanity a multiplanetary species. Welcome, space enthusiasts, to another exciting journey into the realm of innovation and exploration. In today's episode, we embark on a thrilling exploration of Elon Musk's visionary quest to establish a sustainable human presence on the red planet, Mars. Elon Musk, the revolutionary mind behind SpaceX, has captured the imagination of millions with his bold ambition to colonize Mars within our lifetime. But what would Elon Musk's Mars base actually look like? What technologies would it employ? And how would it sustain human life in the harsh conditions of the Martian terrain? Interestingly, SpaceX plans to load even the earliest Mars-bound ships with supplies. Although the cargo may be limited, the initial Martian settlers launched in groups of 10 to 20 people alongside 100 plus metric tons of cargo, will repropose surviving starships as pre-established habitats, storage facilities, and raw material sources. Initial cargo shipments prioritize essentials like power, water, and propellant production alongside the construction of shelters, radiation shielding, and prepared landing pads. As expected, early settlers will likely repurpose the very starships that transported them to Mars as their initial homes on the Red Planet. This innovative approach underscores SpaceX's methodical strategy toward establishing a sustainable presence and paving the way for a human civilization on Mars. However, should events indeed progress in that direction, there exists a divergence of viewpoints on this matter. Some contend that repurposing Starship as a long-term habitat on Mars contradicts its fundamental purpose of reusability. Consider a scenario akin to relocating one's family to a new destination and opting to permanently reside in a motor home. The contention arises from the inefficiency created when a reusable transportation system becomes essentially unusable for any other purpose after being established as living quarters. This perspective challenges the core principle of reusability, a principle that has significantly contributed to SpaceX's past successes, notably the Falcon 9. Moreover, this argument delves into the economic dimension. Advocates for reusing Starship primarily for transportation purposes, rather than confining it to a fixed living space on Mars, emphasize the potential for a notable reduction in the cost per colonist for upcoming missions. Drawing parallels with the triumph of the Falcon 9, where recurrent use substantially slashed the cost of accessing space. Proponents of this perspective advocate for employing a similar approach with Starship, aiming to maximize the economic efficiency of this pioneering spacecraft. In essence, this viewpoint aligns with SpaceX's overarching philosophy of innovation and progress driven by reusability. This very principle has played a vital role in democratizing access to space, making it more accessible and affordable. So, if Starship isn't designated for habitation, what strategies will be employed to establish a base on Mars? What outlines the optimal blueprint for a Martian base camp and its initial setup? To embark on this discussion, the foremost consideration revolves around the location SpaceX should select for landing and operations on Mars. The proposition for a Mars base situated in Gale Crater originates from the meticulous deliberations of an international entity. This forward-looking endeavor carefully considers the minute intricacies crucial for the triumph of such a mission. Centering particularly on Gale Crater as the ideal locale for this inaugural Mars base, Gale Crater emerges as a strategic choice for various compelling reasons, prompting the organization's strong advocacy for its selection. Notably, the crater has been under the exhaustive scrutiny of the Curiosity rover, Mars's largest and most capable exploration rover, for over a decade, offering a comprehensive and intimate understanding of the region. This familiarity plays a paramount part in mission planning and risk management, as the wealth of data gathered by Curiosity aids in making informed decisions regarding the deployment of infrastructure and allocation of resources. Additionally, the region is believed to house subsurface water, an essential resource indispensable for sustaining a prospective colony. Moreover, the crater's elevated ridges 
specifically around the central mountain peak, offer significant protection against radiation, a key consideration for the well-being of Mars settlers. This mission's primary objective is to establish a sustainable human presence on Mars while prioritizing astronaut safety. Its key components include an orbiter, ground stations, a Mars descent vehicle, and inflatable habitats. The deployment sequence involves initiating the orbiter and ground stations, which enter a supersynchronous orbit, facilitating an efficient transfer orbit toward Mars. As the Mars ascent vehicle reaches Mars' sphere of influence, it separates from the cargo and descends into the Martian atmosphere, landing in the designated zone near the Gale volcano. A portion of this assembly's orbit remains stable over Mars, effectively orbiting directly above the landing site. This positioning is of utmost importance, as once the orbital station, habitat, and cargo are all in place on Mars, the crew can transition to a low Earth orbit in a deep space habitat. This strategic move sets the stage for subsequent phases of the mission, ensuring optimal conditions for continued operations. The low Earth orbit station, whether a starship or an alternative component, serves as the starting point for astronauts to establish a deep space living environment. Once this assembly phase concludes, they commence the real-time assembly of the Mars base using telerobots. Employing an automated system with assembly robots on Mars is a prudent decision due to the considerable time delay in transmitting commands from Earth to Mars and receiving feedback. Leveraging telerobots for real-time assembly from Mars orbit streamlines the process by capitalizing on the speed of light for communication. The synchronous orbit station potentially a starship or a replaceable component, plays a critical role in this plan. Its adaptability allows for component replacement whenever necessary. Any potential issues arising during ground station assembly could prompt a return to Earth. Given the deployment of the ground station, however, the pivotal moment arrives after the assembly completion, signifying the commencement of the crews. And that's a wrap for today's exploration into Elon Musk's vision for a Mars base. We've delved into the intricacies of SpaceX's ambitious plans and contemplated the optimal blueprint for humanity's future on the Red Planet. As we've seen, the journey to Mars is not just about reaching a destination, but about pioneering a new era of interplanetary civilization. Elon Musk's bold vision and SpaceX's innovative approach are paving the way for a sustainable and enduring human presence on Mars. But the adventure doesn't end here. If you enjoyed this video and want to stay updated on the latest developments in space exploration, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to our channel. Thank you for joining us on this exciting journey, and we look forward to seeing you in the next exploration of the final frontier. Safe travels, fellow space enthusiasts.